Okay, let's talk about the RockWorks data sheet. Most of the RockWorks utilities and the Earth Apps programs process the data within the RockWorks data sheet, which is this region here of rows and columns. Consider this example showing some ion data for 15 water wells with 50 or 15 rows of data. If I want to create a contour map showing calcium values, I click on the map, grid-based map option, select the option for uh, that's based on XYZ G or XYZ data, and then define which columns contain the X, Y, and the Z data. In this example, I'll use calcium and then move down and press the process button and after a few seconds you've got a calcium contour map. If I want to create a Durov diagram from the same data sheet, I'll click on the Hydrochem Durov diagram option and just assume all the columns are correct. Go down and press the process button at the bottom of the menu and I've got a Durov diagram. There are a zillion other things that I can do with this data set and the utility programs, but the points that I'm trying to make are, are, one, you don't need a separate data sheet for each application. One-stop shopping. You don't need to rearrange your data to suit the program. Leave them in, a, in whatever order they were when you originally got the data. Speaking of getting data, how do you get data into the data sheet? Well, you can type it in like this. You can paste it from the Windows clipboard. Here, I'll show you how. I'll pull up an Excel data sheet that's already got some data in it. And then I'm going to uh, highlight a block of text or of columns, rows and columns. I do a control C or select from the edit um, copy menu. That puts it into the Windows clipboard. And then I toggle back into RockWorks and select either control V or select edit paste from the menus and the data will be positioned starting at the upper left corner of the cell that I, that I selected to do the copying into. You can also import data from other formats by selecting the file import option as shown here. And as you can see, there's a variety of different uh, programs for pulling data in from other sources. Now, let's look at these data sheet columns in more detail. The column titled Use, the first column, or the second column rather, is a fixed column can't change it. This just tells the program, the application programs, which data to ignore and which data to pay attention to. This is a handy feature when you're trying to ignore some data without removing it altogether. You can check and uncheck all of the columns from within the edit menu as shown here. But more importantly, the filter menu over here on the right has more options for enabling and disabling rows of data based on the contents of other data columns or polygons. This is a very useful feature. So you can say, I want to see, I only want to plot a map showing uh, uh, samples that have a calcium value between this range and this range, and a lead value less than this, or in, within this uh, lease that I happen to control, and so on. The actual column titles are obviously important because these titles are what appear within the application menu. For example, if I click on the statistics ternary menu, the column titles shown here are based on the column titles within the data sheet. So, if I click on the upper vertex, I'll see a list of all the data sheet column titles. In this example, I'll select sodium, potassium, and calcium.
calcium as my vertices. I then click the process button and after a few seconds I've got a diagram. To change a column title, right click on it and a menu will pop up. You can enter a, a new column title right here and use the left and right arrow buttons to quickly edit other column titles. This menu also is the place to define what type of data is contained within the columns. For example, let's pick a column that is designated as text, such as the sodium column. Clicking on a cell within the sodium column allows me to type in anything like this, and that's how it will appear on the screen. But if I right click on the symbol column, we can see that it's designated as a vector symbol. This does two things. One, if I click on a cell within the symbol column, like this, I'll be presented with a symbol selection menu. This also determines how the data will be displayed within the data sheet. If I return to the column parameters menu by right-clicking on the symbol column, and change it from a vector symbol to text, watch what happens. The symbol number is displayed with a forward slash separator followed by the symbol color. Not very intuitive. So, let's change it back to a vector symbol. Much better. Now, coordinates are a bit trickier. If I designate a column as an X or a Y coordinate, I've got some sub-options to choose from, including decimal degrees, local feet meters, state plane feet meters, UTM feet and meters. But we're not done yet. Depending on the type of coordinates that were selected, a menu will appear along the right side of the data sheet, over here on the far right, asking for more information that's pertinent to the coordinate system that I've selected. UTMs require that I designate the datum and UTM zone. Local coordinates require the long lat for the reference point or origin. State plane coordinates require the zone. And this information, by the way, is embedded within the data sheet so that Rockworks will know how to convert your data to other coordinate systems later on when you're using some of the application programs. This is way cool when you consider something like this. Let's say that I create a pie chart map of the icons. Of icons. And I'll do this right now. I'll cl click on uh, pie chart or map pie chart. Then I'll click, once I've got the map up now, I click on the Google Earth button, which is available with all of the Rockplot 2D and Rockplot 3D um, programs. And then after a few seconds, um, the program will export the data as a KML file, load, it, or load the Google Earth program, and then display the these pi diagrams at their proper locations. And how did it do that? If I was, um, if, if it didn't know that I was working in a, uh, this UTM zone using this datum um, with these coordinates, it wouldn't be able to convert to the format that Google Earth needs, which is longitude latitude. So finally, data sheets are saved as textual XML files that can be manually edited if need be. Rockworks has no proprietary data formats for two reasons. One, this is science, and science abhors a black box. Two, we know you use other programs, and sharing this data with these other programs is crucial.